what is up you two welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed today's video as you can tell by the title is another true crime story where i'm going to sit here and do my makeup and tell you you know a story about true crime and today we are going to be talking about Otis Tool. Is it Otis Tool? Because it's two T's in there. So I'm not quite sure if it's Otis. I think his mother meant Otis. She just got a little tea happy. And Henry Lee Lucas, who were two, I don't know what to call them. They were just two lovers out here killing up everybody okay before i get into the video i want to ask you to give it a thumbs up if you like it i ain't gonna ask you to like it in the beginning if you don't know you like it already but if you do like it please give it a thumbs up share comment down below let me know your thoughts and uh subscribe and i've been gone for a minute it's my birthday month november 12th was my 11th annual 21st birthday and so honestly i was <laughs> coming off of the week of halloween those seven videos and then i had a lot going on in my own little personal my own little personal life and i was just like it was a bit much it was a lot going on so i need i took a much needed break but i'm back okay i've been gone for a minute but i'm back with the jump off let me stop before i be back with a copyright strike because youtube ain't playing yeah but anyway i've missed you guys like you probably missed me and so without further ado let me just get into the video so henry lee lucas was born on august 23rd 1936 in virginia somewhere in virginia don't remember where don't you know don't really care his mother was a very abusive prostitute and she would often dress him as a girl and call him susan because apparently she wanted a daughter and he wasn't a daughter like he wasn't it so she, you know, she was like, you know what? You gonna be a daughter today. His father lost his legs in a railroad accident. And so he was confined, of course, to like this little wheelchair. And he was very depressed. She would abuse him too. Violent Viola. She was a mess. When Henry was just 10 years old, he got into a fight. And I don't know, something happened. I don't know if his eye was scratched or whatever, but it was injured. It became infected because his... His parents weren't the most fit parents obviously and they ignored it and the infection got so bad that he had to have it removed he had it pretty bad as a kid like not only was viola a prostitute she would service her johns in front of both him and his father as a means of like making money and putting food on the table apparently my homegirl didn't have no other trades or talents but i ain't here to judge i'm just here to tell the story now when henry was still really young his father passed away and what we know for a fact is he died of hypothermia right he got drunk one night spent the night outside during a blizzard fell off his little roly wheeler and then he was dead there were a lot of reports that you know he did it that he did it on purpose which i can see why not that suicide is the answer for anything because it's not it's not the answer, okay? Who goes outside and falls asleep in a blizzard? Viola might have killed him. As Henry got older, his behavior became worse. He became increasingly sexually deviant. He had a half-brother that he would rape. He reportedly raped dead animals, which he killed first. So he was a animal killer and raper. A lot of his 10 years in and out of juvie in jail and on january 11th in 1960 he was 23 years old he and viola got into an argument about whether or not he could stay with her i guess he was coming home from prison again and he needed a steady place to stay because he was just floating around and viola either being the ancient parent that she was or just rightfully not wanting a criminal in her household she denied him the request of coming back to her home again. She was like, you ain't coming back here. So he claims that in the heat of the argument, she struck him over the head. And then in a fit of rage, he struck her back. His quote in regards to the incident was, quote, all I remember was slapping her alongside the neck. But after I did that, I saw her fall and decided to grab her. But she fell on the floor. And when I went back to pick her up, I realized she was dead. Then I noticed that I had a knife in my hand and she had been cut. Because in actuality, she had been stabbed in the fucking neck. He then fled the scene. 
Fun fact, did you guys know that the matriarch is considered or referred to as like the mother of a family, like the matriarch? And matricide is the killing of your mother. I didn't know it had a name. I thought it all was just like murder or homicide or stuff like that. Maybe not so much fun, but it's a fact nonetheless. Anywho, homegirl was not dead. She had just, I guess, passed out. Her daughter, his sister, returned home to find their mother bleeding on the kitchen floor and she called an ambulance and it was too late to save Viola's life. She passed away. She had a heart attack, like stabbed in the neck and then you die of a heart attack. It's crazy. All right, so there was a fly in here that was just completely annoying the hell out of me that I had to go kill. Where were we? Henry, after he killed his mother, was captured, of course, and he, he claimed that he killed her in self-defense, but that didn't fly. They gave the boy 20 to 40 years in prison for second degree murder which is kind of like i didn't plan this it just sort of happened but it wasn't justified he served 10 years and then in june 1970 he was released due to prison overcrowding like y'all didn't have nobody else that y'all could release y'all release murderers and i'm sure out of all the prisoners it's some little crackheads in the back that ain't never killed nobody i'm just saying but y'all let out a murderer in 1971, just one year later, Henry was convicted of attempting to kidnap three little school girls, which is stupid because if you're going to kidnap somebody and this is like your first time kidnapping, you really should just start. You really shouldn't be kidnapping anybody. But if you're going to start to kidnap, common sense, why would you start with three girls? I'm just saying. Pretty sure that's like kidnapping common sense like so while he was serving his five-year sentence for that a family friend started to write him in prison became a little pen pal they had a little pen pal romance going on and she was a single mother which something else that's beyond me like if i'm a single mother why am i gonna get with a man that's in jail for trying to kidnap three little school girls like what they married upon his release in 1975 and then two years later, he left because one of his stepdaughters, which is the lady's kid, obviously, she accused him of sexual abuse. We all know he did it. From there, Henry floated around from relative to relative. The damn fly that I killed is back from the dead, no lie. Fun fact number two, Windex does not kill flies, okay? It just makes them pass out for a second and then they're back to flapping around like nothing ever happened. Either that or they come back as zombie flies. I don't know. But uh, homegirl is smashed now. So let's see her come back from that. One of his family members got him a job down in West Virginia. There he met another lady and got him a little girlfriend and on the job. Here I am. I can't, you know, can't find a man. Here we go. All, all the love luck. And he's a murderer. Apparently he was abusive to her though. And she was accepting of the abuse. But her family was not. They got together. Rallied around to whoop his ass. And then he fled the scene. He was like you know what. I can fight you. But I didn't come to fight your whole family. That's where I draw the line. And so he moved on. And he was just like a drifter floating couch to couch. So that is the early life of Henry Lee Lucas. Up until like young adulthood. Well actually he ain't young no more. Up until his early mid 30s so Otis Tool was born March 5th 1947 over in Jacksonville Florida his father was an alcoholic who abandoned the family when Otis was really young his mother wasn't much better she was very abusive and apparently she wanted him to be a girl so bad apparently she was very disappointed that old otis was a boy she wanted a girl very badly and so she would dress otis up in girls clothing to claim that as a child he was a victim of sexual assault by a lot of family members and family friends including being raped by his older sister and next door neighbor which is sad and disgusting all at the same time his grandmother was also a, an extremely religious Satanist who would refer to him as devil child. Which she might have been on to something there because something was wrong with homeboy. But anyway, we're going to get all into that in a minute. It was also said that Tool suffered from mental retardation and he had an IQ of only 75. So homeboy, you know, he was, he was different as a child before his father 
threw up the peace sign and left, he prostituted him out to neighbors and family friends from the age of five, grown men, and that he felt like he knew he was gay at the age of 10. He came out to his family and the abuse from his mother really like, really amped up. She didn't necessarily agree with that, but he didn't care. He said that wasn't gonna stop him from living his life. He had him some little boyfriends. And eventually he dropped out of school in the ninth grade and he just decided he's gonna do his own thing, run away from home, kick it in the gay clubs and just really, you know, just, just do him. In addition to doing him, he also did other people for money because he was a male prostitute and that's just how he made a living for himself out there in the streets. So in January, 1976, fast forward, he's a little older and he is about i think he's 29 29 he marries a woman that is 25 years older than him hopefully this wasn't a mistake adding this green here because i pictured it looking a little different but we're gonna roll with it because we're already here so whatever they got married and apparently three days after their wedding she left him because she found out that his true sexuality was homosexuality and i'm like girl you didn't know that before you married him like how or maybe he hid it maybe he hid it and once he realized they were married he was just like well i'm gay too so i don't know how it happened i just know after three days of marriage homegirl was out of there he actually said in an interview later that he only married her to conceal his sexuality to like make himself appear straight and um he blew it so that same year 1976 both henry and Tool are homeless floaters, you know, doing what homeless people do. They meet at a soup kitchen in Jacksonville, Florida, and they hit it off instantly. Like they are literally two peas in a pod. They soon develop a sexual relationship, like literally soon that same day. And they obviously had a lot in common with their upbringings. They both were forced to wear females clothing because their mothers were crazy and their fathers were not much better. Tool invites Lucas to move in with him and his parents. Tool's 11 year old niece Becky Powell also lived with his parents and she was intellectually impaired. That's a nice way of putting it. She wasn't all there. The elevator was there, the lights came on, but the thing didn't leave the lobby, okay? It just... During this time there was a period of normalcy for both of them stability they just they stayed there they did odd jobs around the neighborhood and they were just living as honest people but apparently they got a little bored with that life and decided you know what let's go on a cross-country massacre they would prey upon hitchhikers migrant workers and prostitutes people that they felt like were degenerates or i guess didn't deserve to live um i mean as if they were any better they would pick them up and lure them off to a secluded quiet area where they would murder them and they just used this as a way for them to to bond really it was something that they both really really enjoyed a lot i mean y'all gotta get better hobbies what happened to going to the movies bowling Lucas claimed that he would coach Tool on how to carry out his crimes so that they don't get caught, which I felt like that was kind of weird because, sir, didn't you go to jail for murdering your mother? You got caught. So how are you going to tell me if you spent 10 years in the slammer how to do it and not get caught? But Tool wasn't the smartest person, so there's that. Lucas also claimed that he did not like the way that Tool was committing all his crimes the same way he was like look you gotta you gotta put some stank on it okay you gotta switch it up you did that now let's do this i feel like i'm looking real more tisha adams like and i ain't even mad about it so oftentimes they would sexually assault their victims before they killed them they would mutilate them beyond recognition and in later interviews they said that they did not have the slightest more so of guilt like they never experienced any feelings of well this is fucked up they carried out their crimes and then it was just on to the next tools creepy ass also like to eat the bodies and they would cook them in different ways mostly barbecue though because you know they had to cook outside because they were like 
homeless. In a private conversation later on down the line when they were both in prison and they called each other, which I don't think you're allowed to do anymore, but back when they were in prison, they were allowed to do it. So they called each other. There was this one phone call where they recorded the two reminiscing about the crimes that they committed and the way that they carried them out. And Tool was heard saying, and I quote, some taste like real meat when it's got barbecue sauce on it. With. And to that, Lucas was like, remember how I used to like to pour the blood out of them? Like, what does that even fucking mean? So remember then 11 year old niece, Becky Powell? Well, now she's 12 and they're back at Tool's parents' house. Lucas starts to see Becky behind Tool's back in a romantic aspect. And this is where their relationship began to fall apart because of course, Tool wasn't with it. Now, I don't know if it's because he was cheating on him or if it was just because he was cheating on with his cousin or the fact that little Becky was 12. I don't know what part of it Tool had an issue with. Maybe he had an issue with all of it, but I don't know. Anyway, so Lucas told Tool that he loved to have someone young look up to him and he felt like there was no one better for him than a small child. So you think about that the next time you feel like somebody broke up with you in a fucked up way. He grabs Becky up, they take off, he leaves Tool and him and Becky go to live on this like ranch somewhere. Don't know the specifics about whether they were renting or squatting. Don't really care. Tool was so upset by this, so heartbroken that he ran off and killed nine people just to quote unquote blow off some steam. Meanwhile, things between Becky and Henry Lucas does not go as Becky probably thought it would because he got frustrated with her rather quick and after an argument, Lucas took little Becky out into a empty field and then he kills her, chops up her body in tiny pieces and spreads them all around. He was still rather upset so then he went back for the ranch owner, lured her to the fields, killed her as well and stuffed her in a drainage pipe. He was big mad. What happened to, what happened to getting mad and taking a walk? Feeling real cosmic by the eyes. I'm feeling real cosmic by the eyes. Lucas was arrested shortly after he killed Becky and Homegirl, and Tool was imprisoned separately for burning a 64 year old man alive. So, this is where they get back in contact and they have that little conversation of reminiscing on the love that they had out here killing folks and eating them with barbecue sauce. Originally, Henry was only arrested for the possession of a deadly weapon, but he was so eager to incriminate himself. Like he wanted credit for all of the things that he had done. He was one of those. He was very eager to talk to the police about all the crimes that he and his bae had committed together. Tool, however, was a bit more reluctant. He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. But after Lucas started taking the police officers out, showing them where the bodies were, and he started to get all this attention, Tool wanted in on it too. He was like, okay, yeah, we did it. We did it, where's my interview? By his account, they had murdered 108 people, including Adam Walsh, who is the son of the host of America's Most Wanted, John Walsh. Very likable guy. I guess if you're not a murderer on the run. Lucas, however, confessed to killing thousands of people. And a lot of people don't believe that he killed in the thousands. The general consensus is that he just got a little happy with the attention he was getting and just was just claiming every just just doing the most just overdoing it he did let her admit that confessing to the murders got him extra privileges like it's insane actually there's a netflix documentary coming out about henry lee lucas and like his interrogation with the police and you can see like the way they handled him it was kind of like he was a celebrity like they would take him by fast food restaurants on the way to the oh no edges on the way to these sites where he would show them bodies. If you look at the trailer for the documentary, it's kind of mind blowing how well they treated him, like as if he wasn't a murderer. He said that as a man on death row, confessing to a murder just became his way of 
getting some outside time and a trip by McDonald's, okay? Of course, at this point, you're already on death row. You don't really have much to lose, right? The police closed 213 cases from their confession, which drew a lot of controversy because a lot of people felt like the police were just being lazy and the way that they treated him, like I said, with so many privileges, really upset a lot of people. They felt like he was committing to stuff he didn't do and they were just so eager to close these cold cases. They were like, yeah, yeah, you did it, okay, and just not really finding the true killer for some of these crimes. There have been four movies and two documentaries made about their star-crossed lover crime spree. I guess it'll be three now because Netflix, like I said, is coming out with one next month. Their murder of Adam Walsh, of course, led to the creation of America's Most Wanted, the TV show with his father, John Walsh, being the host. And also the rewriting of countless child protection laws. Let me put these back. Lucas was convicted of 11 homicides and sentenced to death for one. On March 12, 2001, he was found dead in his cell from heart failure. He was 64 and they buried him, but apparently his grave was vandalized so much that as of 2012, he is in an unmarked grave to keep people from going by writing fuck you on his tombstone. So a jury found Tool guilty of murder and he was sentenced to death. And then while he was in prison, they found him guilty of another murder of a 19 year old and he received a second death sentence. He was granted an appeal later and they both were commuted to just life sentences, no death. After his incarceration, he pled guilty to four more murders that had taken place in Tallahassee and received four more life sentences, which Look, let me tell you something. This is not to say that I don't agree with him getting all these life sentences because he was clearly and obviously a terrible person. But let me tell you something about me. If I do some stuff, you only getting me for what you figure out, police. If I kill 15 people and you only figure out one, baby, I'm only going for one. I'm not coming back and being like, oh, and I killed him, him, and him. No, if you don't know, I don't know. I'm only going down for what you caught me doing. But I mean, I'm not a murderer. I wouldn't kill nobody though, I don't think. I just did not get the point of him going to jail, getting these two life sentences and being like, you know, by the way, there were four more in Tallahassee back in the day. Like, you're already in jail for life. They're not giving you a deal like you're just getting some more life sentences my girl like what's the tea i don't understand but anyway but anywho at the age of 49 in 1996 tool died in prison from cirrhosis and um his body went unclaimed so he was buried at the state prison cemetery so that is it for this story and this look if you enjoyed either or both give it a thumbs up don't forget to comment down below subscribe share the video and um i think that's all you can do Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace, y'all. I really like this hairstyle. This is like the second time I had it before and they are so long. I just feel like a, I just feel like a goddess, a golden goddess. I feel like Cleopatra or something. I don't know. But anyway, let me end this video. I